Hey, do you guys have clutter in your workshop or your garage? We've got the perfect project for you today. It's a French cleat wall system. Allows you to organize all your tools, uh, whether they be garden tools, woodworking tools, across the board. Stick around, we're gonna take you through it now. Today we, we were shopping for our French cleat project. Half inch red oak plywood, one by three, three quarter by two and a half, which will be our cleat materials and our 054 molding. And we're gonna picture frame our half inch plywood. So give me a couple minutes. I wanna get all this material back to the workshop. We'll get our project started. Okay guys, so being in the workshop here a little bit, we had a space between our wall cabinets and an end wall, and we decided it'd be a great place to house some of the clamps, some of the, the drill bits, the router bits. We have about 70 inches in width, and we're about 44 inches tall for the upper cabinet, so we wanted to mimic that size. So our width is 51 inches that we've came up with. Working with a 70 inch wall space, and a 51 inch outside to outside of our frame and from the wall about nine and a half inches. So it'll be nice and centered and it'll have a nice perimeter around it so it doesn't look like it's crowded. All right, let's go see how it's built. I've went ahead and started in the project a little bit. It all started with the idea of this, this little sketch. And because you're creating it for your space, you adapt it to your needs. I've been on the table saw, I've been on the miter box, and I've used the cordless drill, the cordless palm sander, and the cordless nailer. So stick around. Let's see how we've used some of these tools. We did an actual physical layout on the plywood to locate our French cleats. And what we wanted to do was have room in between each individual French cleat. So when we bring our mounting boards in, we can access the spacing and then allows the other half of our French cleat to engage our permanently mounted cleats on the plywood. We determined our spacing, and then it became really self-evident where things wanted to be located. We're using a three quarter by two and a half inch cleat, and we wound up being 44 by 51 inches on our plywood sheet, which the 48 inch plywood sheet plus our surrounding molding, and we'll show you how we did that. Uh, we applied it, and then we started our layout. It worked out that we wanted to have some perimeter spacing on the end of our cleats. And it worked out to be a nice full two inch net material. We have two inch material laying around the shop. That became our gauge block that gave us our center to center and gave us a nice true straight line. On the horizontal spacing, we started at the bottom with a three and a half inch width then we went three and a half inches in between each one of the French cleats. And we did that the whole way up through. And then we had a little wider margin at the top, which will be nice. Now we'll be able to hang some nice materials up there, have plenty of height and won't be interfering anything. The other item that we used, layout hole locations. So what we did, I took and I measured six inches in on each end and <clears throat> the thickness of three quarters of an inch. So I could go to my edges. We came up with an offset of three quarters of an inch on the back of our French cleats and determined that's where we wanted to locate a hole from the backside of the plywood so when we attach with screws from the backside, we know we're going into the center of that nice flat area. In doing that, while still having our lines on, we align the bottom of this three quarter thick stock and we took 
and just went across, made a three quarter inch offset, okay? And then in doing so, we determined that we wanted three screws and we took and marked up our boards here and here. So now I have a left and a right. I come over, I identify six inch offset there, come down to the other end of our project board, six inch offset there. And then our center line was the length of our board. So now we have locations where we can drill our holes even after all those lines have disappeared through our sanding when we go to the next step of actually applying the finished French cleats. Okay, folks, so we have a great product here at Baird Brothers. It's our B054 picture frame molding. We're gonna use this molding to conceal all these plywood edges. So it's a nice flat cut and they come together just like that with a 45 miter cut, 90 degree corner and making a nice face profile. We finished ripping our French cleats and we're getting ready for the final assembly of these last three cleats that need attached to our plywood backer. We just did an end cut on a 45 degree angle. So our three quarter surface kind of feathers itself off. So it graduates back down to the plywood. It's just not that blunt square edge. So we went ahead and did that. We've opted to do everything unfinished. We're taking advantage of gluing our French cleats to our plywood. We will be brad nailing just to hold them in place. Then we'll turn the unit over and we will screw from the back side of the plywood. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the sander here, make those lines disappear. Then we'll go ahead and install the, these, uh, the balance of these cleats. We've got our plywood sanded, all the lines are removed. We're ready to lay a piece in, see how they look, and looks good. Now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and turn the piece over, and this will be our glue surface area. We'll apply some glue. Turn it over. Locate our edge, locate our three and a half inch block. Go ahead and leave it fall down into place. Then just as a temporary aid to hold that in place, we'll go ahead and shoot a couple brad nails in there. I'll give that a little bit of an angle because I'm running pretty close on the nail length and then our material stock thickness. Those are somewhat temporary because we're gonna reinforce that with three screws from the back side as we proceed here. You just wanna locate, drop in place. So I'm gonna go ahead, move around, finish this last cleat, and then we'll be back I'll flip him over and we'll finish the actual French cleat board up. So we have our board turned over and knowing where we wanted to have screw holes, we went ahead and just pre-drilled a small drill bit there. So when we flip him over, we know exactly where we wanted to be. Everything's nice and neat and in alignment both directions. And there's one of those tips, just a little bit of wax on these screws. And it really does aid in that screw doing its work because we're going in the solid three quarter inch oak underneath this plywood. There's that ratcheting effect. And that's only taking it so deep into the plywood, which is nice. I don't have to worry about going through my one by three.
our remaining three cleats screwed from the back side of the plywood. Now I'm just running a square up off of my marks down here, and that's going to identify when we get the board up to the wall where we want to locate the screws so we know we're going through the plywood and into our wall studs. Let me get this done, and then we're going to the wall. Okay, there we go. Just got done mounting our French cleat wall system to the wall. We located the studs behind, marked them on our board. Uh, we drilled a small pilot hole, ran the screws in. This is good to go. We're ready to start hanging trays and compartments and so forth off of this. We're gonna to put together a couple little uh, utility boxes just to demonstrate to you how adaptable and expandable this system is. We switched over to a Baltic birch plywood material. It's not gonna weaken when we cut configurations out of it. So using some of our cleat material, that is always gonna act as your backer board. So we attach a top shelf component to one of the pieces of cleat material for the backer board, and then you build off of that. We added a couple of the little support members because we are gonna be hanging off of this particular shelf, we're gonna be hanging some heavy clamps. We wanna transfer some of that weight or that leverage down a little support leg. So that's what we've done here. We took a inch and three eighths Forstner bit, drilled a hole, extended our cut lines on the, the miter box, nice, clean, neat. Of course, we used the wood glue wherever we could, but then we also took advantage of the Craig hole system again. Very easy, very quick, and as you can see, very strong. Same thing with this little guy. We just drew out a grid of line spacings, and then we took a Forstner bit again, drew a series of holes, and this particular piece is gonna be for some of the drill bits that we have. I'm gonna put these up on the wall, and this is just a start because we have some tools to find a home for, and I think this wall system is going to be it. Another great project today here at Baird Brothers. We started with a sketch on a piece of paper, wound up with a real nice French wall cleat system, and we love it going to clean our shop up. It'll do the same for yours. Really a, a fun project. Follow us on, on the social contentstudio.bairdbrothers.com. Plans are available there for this and previous projects. And hey, until next time, see you later.